Hello everyone, today we have with us Dr. V. Natarajan, who is an eminent neurologist and is the former director and professor of neurology at Madras Medical College. Thank you so much Dr. Natarajan for joining you, us today. It's my pleasure as well. Thank you. So the first question I'd like to ask you is what are the atypical symptoms that lead to incorrect or delayed diagnosis of Parkinson's disease? Okay, permit me before we go to the atypical symptoms, uh, let me tell you what are the typical symptoms so that it would be easy to understand what are the atypical symptoms or the red flags wherein we would suspect that it may not be Parkinson's disease or it might be some condition which is mimicking a Parkinson's disease which we call as atypical Parkinsonism. Now to the typical symptoms of Parkinson's disease are as all of us know tremor, rigidity, slowing of movements of bradykinesia and freezing wherein the patient is unable to move at all. These are the four classical symptoms of Parkinson's disease. And of course, one more important thing is that they should respond to levodopa. That is the idiopathic Parkinson's disease. If a person does not respond to levodopa, then probably we will have to consider reviewing the diagnosis of idiopathic Parkinson's disease. So now coming to the atypical or the red flags, which would suggest that this may not be the idiopathic Parkinson's disease or it might mean some of the other what we used to call as uh, Parkinson plus syndromes and which are now called as atypical Parkinsonism or features like early falls and uh, cognitive difficulty namely dementia which is much more than what would be associated in early phases of Parkinson's and uh, bladder dysfunction which occurs quite early. Similarly, other autonomic features like fall in blood pressure which occurs early during the course. See all these could be part of Parkinson's disease in the latter part of Parkinson's or as Parkinson's disease advances. When these happen in the earlier phases, then these suggest that these could be other disorders which are as I mentioned part of the Parkinson plus or atypical Parkinsonism and there we would have to be wary about being Parkinson per se. And regarding coming to the second part of the question, delayed diagnosis, again what happens here is several times tremor is considered as the essential tremor. Essential tremor which is without cause, that is the most common form of tremor. So it could be mistaken for essential tremor even though the person could be having a Parkinsonian tremor and hence the diagnosis might be delayed. Other features which could, uh, another common uh, feature is patient might have pain or stiffness particularly at the shoulder level and this they would go to orthopedic surgeons and uh, be treated as periarthritis but what in essence is they are having is they are having early phases of Parkinson's disease which very often presents as pain particularly at the shoulder level and it could also be on one side of the body itself or on both sides. So that is again leads to a delayed diagnosis. Then as I mentioned earlier, they could have early bladder manifestations sometimes for Parkinson patients or Parkinsonism, which again might be going to the urologist and be diagnosed as uh, prostate enlargement. So that is another condition where it could happen. And uh, the other situation is some sometimes sleep disorders, uh, wherein people have uh, behavioral changes or sleep related behavioral changes. These could be harbingers of Parkinson's or other degenerative disorders for that matter. But then it would be uh, difficult to pick them up at that stage. But one will have to be aware that these also could later lead on to these sort of disorders and they might uh, uh, come ahead by even 5 to 10 years ahead of the onset of Parkinson's disease. That also could happen. These are the usual uh, things which we can be mistaken. Uh, or uh, causing a delayed diagnosis of Parkinson's disease. Which clinical features are helpful to differentiate dementia related to Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease? Of course, the question implies that uh, the person is demented or has a cognitive decline. So that is common for both of these conditions. So when we have symptoms referable to extrapyramidal system, namely those which involve the basal ganglionic symptoms, which would mean 
as I mentioned earlier, when the patient has, in addition to the dementia, the patient has tremor, the patient has difficulty in walking, or the patient has other features, non-motor features of Parkinson's, like uh, constipation, bladder disturbance, autonomic system involvement. These are all features which would go more in favor of Parkinson's disease rather than Alzheimer's dementia. In Alzheimer's dementia, cognitive decline or dementia is the principal feature and they generally do not have other features, associated features of basal ganglionic involvement. At the same time, I would have to mention that there is a condition called frontotemporal dementia with Parkinson's disease associated with extra pyramidal features. Even in that, dementia is the principal involvement. So, the maximum deficit is with regards to the cognition and much less is the basal ganglionic involvement. So, basically the differentiation is whether it is cognition alone or whether it is cognition plus other nervous system manifestations that helps in differentiation. So, what would you suggest how to diagnose Parkinson's disease in primary health care? Whether it is primary health care, secondary health care or tertiary health care, as far as the diagnosis of Parkinson's disease is concerned, it is only clinical. We as of now do not have any definitive diagnostic feature of Parkinson's disease with regards to investigations, though there are some which are coming up, but they are yet to be proven in 100% also, also, uh, of patients. So principally it is a clinical diagnosis. So it does not matter whether it is primary, secondary or tertiary. Based on the clinical symptoms we can diagnose and clinical symptoms are when a person has tremor, bradykinesia and uh, rigidity and freezing gait, very likely there is no differential diagnosis, it is Parkinson's syndrome. I would call it as Parkinsonism and as I said when they respond to levodopa, it becomes idiopathic Parkinson's disease. So once it has been diagnosed that it is Parkinson's disease, what are the early management steps? The early management steps in the sense would uh, depend on uh, what is the predominant symptom which they are having. For example, many a time the person might have only tremors. We have what is called as a tremor dominant Parkinson's disease itself, one subtype of Parkinson's. So these people can have only tremor going on for a long time. Perhaps sometimes some of these patients even have it for 8 to 10 years, tremor is the only manifestation with maybe very little uh, rigidity or bradykinesia which does not bother them. So in those sort of patients who have only tremors, they could be managed either they do not need to have any, any medication if they opt to or if the tremors is bothering them or they are concerned about that uh, tremor, they could be put on low doses of uh, anticholinergics like trihexyphenyl. As far as we put them on low dose, there is no harm in it and they could continue on it for quite some time. When they develop other features which go with it, namely bradykinesia or rigidity or difficulty in moving around, gait dysfunction, then that sort of patients we either put them on dopamine agonists or dopa, dopa per se, that is dopamine per se. And now we know that there is not uh, any uh, necessity for starting on dopamine agonists, even starting on dopa early is not harmful. So the patient could be started on dopa quite early if required. So, is that some, is that a drug that you recommend for dealing or the then, then, then as far as the question of uh, delaying the progression of mm -hmm. uh, Parkinson's disease, we as of now do not have anything, but at the same time we have the monoamino oxidase inhibitors, selegiline and rasagiline. Selegiline was used earlier, but now we start using rasagiline. And rasagiline is the drug which we should be putting them on. Of course, it has been not been proven that uh, it does. Uh, delay, but that is the only available drug which is claimed to delay the progression of the disease. So, what is your opinion about Docplexus? Uh, how can it help in spreading awareness among doctors if they can, if it can? See, I, I am also a, a viewer of Docplexus. I see whatever comes on it, but at the same time, I should say I have not been responding <laughs> to that much. But uh, it is helpful. It is helpful for us because. Uh, it poses uh, clinical cases and uh, you see the viewer's response, you see how each one uh, uh, analyzes them or thinks about them and that gives us a spread of the differential diagnosis which we can have. It is a good forum to interact, yes. Only thing is we should have the time. 
<laughs> that's the that's the difficulty which we, why why some of us don't choose to always because the one is the connectivity to the net available to us when we are free or when we have the connectivity we should be free this is the problem which, we, which i face so i hope that uh, this problem is resolved when you and we see you more active on the platform yes when when probably i have uh, wifi connectivity all time i think i should be able to do that we we'll definitely hope <laughs> that happens soon and thank you so much for interacting i thank you so much for having given me this opportunity it was a pleasure thank you to stay updated on our latest kl videos and interviews please follow us on twitter like us on our facebook page and subscribe to our youtube channel happy dog flexing